What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. The next few videos will be dedicated to relationships and eloquence since in my opinion, it's incredible to use once you understand it. In a relational database model, which eloquent is, it's expected that you will have tables that are related to each other. So let's say that we have a table cars with our ID, name, found it and the description. Now every car obviously has its own car model or multiple car models. Would you adjust your current car table by adding a new column model or would you create a new table? Well, if you would add a new column, it would look like this, right? We have our ID, name, founded, description and our model. Like I said, the issue is that one car has many models and not only one. So we would have multiple IDs with the same name, same founded, same description, but different models. And that's not beneficial. In a relational database model, it's expected that you will have tables that are related to each other. And Eloquent provides simple and powerful tools to make the process of relating your database tables easier than ever. Now in Eloquent, we call this a one-to-many relationship. We can have one car, and that one specific car has many models. So our database would look like this. We would keep our cars model just as it is, so the ID, name, founded, and description. But we create a new table called cars underscore model, which has its own unique ID, but the car ID which refers to the ID in the table cars, it has a model name, and it has the timestamps. There are two ways how we could handle our migration. We could create it right inside of our current migration of cars, so right below of it, since it's related, or we could create a complete new migration. And for my demonstration today, I will add it right below the current migration of cars that we have, so it makes it a little bit easier. But I recommend you to use a new migration instead of adding it right here. Let's create a schema. So let's say schema, create. Now inside the create method, we need to define the table name. So let's say car underscore models. Then we want to pass in the function, just like what we're doing up here. Let's pass in blueprint variable table right outside of our parentheses, let's add curly braces. Our car model has its own unique ID. So let's create a table increments and let's pass in the ID. Then we have an integer. So let's say table, an unsigned integer with the name car underscore ID, which will refer to the ID that we have right there. We'll do that in a second. We have another table, which is a string of model underscore name. Let's add a table for timestamps. The next one that we have is new. So let's say that we have our table, which has a foreign key of car ID. So let's say foreign. And inside our method, let's pass in car ID. So we're basically saying that the unsigned integer that we have is our foreign key. We need to link it somehow with our cars table to the ID. So let's do that. What we could do is to say access operator, references to the column that we have inside our cars called ID on so on the table cars so let's do that let's say cars and this can be it so we're basically saying our foreign key is car ID which references to the ID on cars what I want to do is to add one more method so let's say on delete and what we want to do on delete is cascade and let me outline it actually, so it looks a little bit better. All right, why do we add the on delete that we have right here? Well, if you delete the car, you don't want your car models to be in your database since it's not being used because the ID does not exist anymore. And that's what the on delete does. If you delete a specific car, it will automatically delete the car models related. We can add one more value inside the parentheses inside of cascade. But for example, right now, let's just keep it as it is. But just in case you don't want to delete it, you could also set it equal to set null. So whenever you delete a specific car, it will set the car model's car ID to null. We will keep it as cascade. What we need to do right now is to migrate it. So let's hop to iTerm. Let's say PHP artisan migrate. All right, it's saying that nothing is there to migrate. So what we need to do is to say PHP artisan migrate rollback, which will roll back our migration. And then we can migrate it once again. 
So it migrates the create cars table. So let's hop to MySQL. Let's say show tables. And you can see that we have car models and our cars table. When I created a video about introduction to Eloquent, we didn't do anything with our show methods right here. The reason why is because I want to use it right now. And before we continue on guys, I want to start using my Instagram more. So if you haven't followed me on it and you are interested in more personal stuff about me, I have added the link in the description. So go check it out and give me a follow. I want to show you how we could set our models manually first. So let's hop to the command line interface. And right here, let's say desk car underscore models to see what we have. As you can see, our ID is pre, which stands for primary. But our car ID is mole. Mole basically tells your database that there can be multiple IDs in this column that have the same value. And that's correct, right? Because a car can have multiple models. There's also another one which you don't see right here, and that's uni. So let me write it down. Uni, which stands for unique. We need to do something inside our model that will do something with the data that we have. Since we already have our car model, we need to create a new model. So let's say PHP artisan make me a model called car model. Let's hit enter and our model has been created successfully. If that went a little bit too fast for you, let me rewind. How this works is that the car model belongs to a specific car and the car has many models and we need to fix this right inside of the models that we have. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's start off with our car.php, so our car model. What we need to do right here is to create methods that will return the right data based on our tables. Let's create a method, let's say public function, and the name is pretty tricky because it needs to be related to the associate table that we want to use. This could be underscores, camel cases, or whatever. But in my opinion, try to keep it the same as the model name. For the one-to-many relationship, we have the opportunity to get multiple models. So let's say that we want to call it car models instead of a car model. So what do we need to do right here? We need to return something, which is this, a method called has many. Parentheses, semicolon. Inside the parentheses, we need to pass in the model class of the associated table. So in our case, we want to associate car model, colon, colon, class, with the car model that we have. And we don't need to add the full path right here because requiring Eloquent's complete model. What we have done right here was defining the relationship method for the car model. We need to create another method for the car model that's related to the specific car. So let's open our car model.php. Well, we could actually copy our, let's say, protected table and primary key. Let's go back, paste it right here. Table is car underscore models, and the primary key is ID as well. So what's next? We need to create a new method. So let's say public function. And once again, the name needs to be related to the model that we want to associate it with, so car. So let me add it as a comment. A car model belongs to a car. So what we need to do inside our method is to return this, and I'm basically repeating myself again, one model or multiple belongs to, and inside our parentheses, we need to pass in the model that we want to associate it with. Let's say car, colon, colon, class. Save it, and let me actually save my model as well. All right. We need to add data inside our database, and there are multiple ways how we could do this. We could do it directly inside of our controller, but what I just want to do is to go to iTerm and add it manually. So let's say that we want to insert into cars because we need a specific car, the title, founded, description, comma, values, Audi, comma, 1908, and this is my Audi as the description. Oh, it's not title, excuse me. It's name, my bad. All right, let's select all from cars. This went well. Let's desk car underscore models. All right. So we need to insert into car underscore models, just the values car ID and model name. 
so let's say car underscore id model underscore name values and as you can see our id of the audi is one so one comma inside single quotes a1 which is the model of the audi if you're not familiar with cars hit enter one row has been affected let's hit the arrow up and let's change the second one to a3 and a5 three is enough so let's select all from car underscore models and this is fine you can see that our car id has multiple values which are the same and right now we're ready to output the data on our page so let's go back to visual studio code let's go to our cars controller and the show method since we've used the resource flag you can see that the id has been passed in automatically well actually let's go to our ui and let's change that first so inside our index let's go to the car name let's copy it let's create an anchor and let's place it right inside of the anchor let's give it the href of forward slash cars forward slash that specific car with the id save it let's go to chrome refresh it and you can see that our audio is clickable but let's add a hover as well so in our h2 let's say hover text dash gray dash 500 save it let's go to visual studio code and since we've used the resource flag inside our cars controller our show method has the id passed in so what we could do is dd id just to double check that everything works fine refresh the page click on audi and in the uri you can see that the endpoint is one and one has been printed out so this works fine this is always a double check that i do when i work with laravel let's get rid of our dd because we could create a new variable car since we're getting one single car back set it equal to the car and find everything of that specific id now let's return a view that we don't have yet to cars.show and we want to pass in an object and not an array so with car as that specific car before we continue on let's dd car again to see if everything works fine save it refresh the browser and i'm not opening my attributes but you can see that one car has been returned now we're ready to create our view so let's go back to our cars create a new file show.blade.php let's say extends layouts.app let's create a new section called content and section let me close off my migration and my controller because we could copy most of the stuff in our index so let's scroll up we could use our header but instead of saying cars we could print out the car name variable car name let's go to chrome well let's remove our dd first in our controller excuse me save it chrome refresh it audi has been printed out let's go to our index and we don't need to add a new car button but let's copy this entire class all right let's paste it right below our div let's scroll up we don't need the loop we don't need the edit button and the form and the closing div of course we do need the found it we don't need the name since the name is printed out at the top and we do need the description save it and let's go to chrome we need to remove our end for each refresh it this is all right let's style it a little bit remove the width because we don't need it let's say that we want to text center everything and this looks pretty good right now but what we could do is to add some lorem ipsum excuse me it looks a little bit better than one piece of text all right let's scroll down let's copy it you don't need to do this it's just for myself let's edit it let's change the text all right let's click on the audio again all right and right now we're ready to print out our models what i want to do is to go right above our hr let's create an unordered list with a paragraph of models let's set the class equal to text large text gray 700 and padding y-axis is 3. right below our paragraph we want list items but before we do that 
I want to loop through my models first. And I don't want to create a for each, but I want to add a for else. Well, that went wrong. And the reason why I want to do that is because there might be a chance that a car does not have models. So we want to print out something if there are no models, right? So first, if there are models, create a list item with a class of inline, italic, text dash gray dash 600, padding X is one and the padding Y is six. So right here, we want to print out our model name. But before we do that, let's fix our loop. We want to loop through our car, but we want to access another property called car models. So we're accessing the method that we have in our car model as one single model. In our list item, we could basically say model, give me the model underscore name. If it's empty, print out a paragraph of no models found. Save it, go back to Chrome, and you can see that the models A1, A3, and A5 have all been printed out. You might wonder why we didn't use the access operator to access our model name, and that's because we're returning an object, so we can't use the access operator. And this was it. Thanks for watching this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, click on the subscribe button.